This little house that I return to every evening Has been home for 40 years This little house that I return to every evening Has been home for 40 years Though our children long have scattered In these rooms I hear the echoes Of their laughter Though your death my heart has battered In these rooms I feel the presence Of your love From out my windows I can see Our grandsons playing Rolling, tumbling in the snow From out my windows I can see Our grandsons playing Rolling, tumbling in the snow How they elevate my spirits How they sweep aside my sorrow With their gladness I will weave it into memory To wrap around my shoulders When they go
you. Dancing with the 13th of March. Look through windows, inside out. Early morning sun promises warmth. Step outside, chill of winter still. Only a hint of heat. Early morning sun is a tease. 13th of March, 2013, dancing. Thank you. Time's fleeting hand passes across our experience and darkens life to an unclean panorama of uncertainty. As night falls, church bells ring in twilight mists that flow up the river, spill over levees, and drift across the rooftops of house after house. What strange spirit blows in on this wind tonight? Where does it come from? And where is it going, I wonder, as I lie in my corner room, aloft and, al and alone? When the sun drops below the edge of the horizon, this city sparkles like a jewel. Its dazzling beauty belies a restless heart. When all the shops have closed down, when all the day's concerns are put away. Even then, this city does not sleep. With somnambulistic fervor, it tosses and turns all night, like a child with fever. For beneath these streets, there is a subterranean world teeming with souls who wander aimlessly, blinded by suffering, and unaware of what draws them apart. I wish that I could put my hand upon its forehead to help it settle down. I wish that I could wrap it up warm inside a blanket and sing a slow, soft lullaby to help it come round. Thank you. It's not much, it's all we know And I love you so It won't be easy what we do To our hearts we must be true And I love you so you. 
Thank you so much. Heavenly, you looked at me so lovingly. You told me sentimentally of wonders yet to be. Tenderly, you painted pictures rosily of all the possibilities for future memories. Dreamily, it's turned into a reverie. Your desirability is what I long to see. Then suddenly, I sense the real fragility. But your words were flowing lyrically. And you gave your love to me. Thank you. Giving birth to stepchildren. <laughs> Knowing laughs. <clears throat> My bones remember the babies I bore. My misshapen skin held their folded forms. Afterwards, I listened to snuffly, uneven breathing and thin wailing in the dark hours to learn my baby son's ways. <clears throat> I held my breath to discover what delighted my toddler daughter. They left my body's cave long ago, but when my young children, my big children, reach to me now, my hands and my voice know what comforted them when they were small. With my stepchildren, I didn't get to have the intimate experience of pregnancy or the celebration of adoption day. I, like most, became a step-parent at my wedding. The four of them, my children and his children, held the vine-covered supports of the chuppah, all of us dressed up and very anxious. I never knew the babies his children had been. Instead of snuggling in the midnight rocking chair, we had uprooted households. Instead of private knowing, we had unhappy grandparents. Instead of my familiar hand, they longed for the other mother, the real one, the one who had learned their baby needs. In our case, the real mother had died. That word, step, signals the extra distance that will always be between us, at least one step. Often it has felt more like a chasm. A stepmother is a threadbare rag in the winter. I have so little of what they want most. In addition to the mistakes I've authored myself, of which there are many, I have been an unrelenting, flashing sign of their loss. I'm here, here, here. She's gone, gone, gone. Eyes squeeze tight. They hold on to the one who's gone and erase me for a minute. They have wanted so badly not to see me. They've also wanted not to love me. Loving me could mean they were moving on in some terrible, profoundly sad way. I know now that their distance and distaste, highlighting my faults with neon markers, never had much to do with me. But their cold resistance sometimes felt like it would chill me forever. Regardless of how they love me, though, or how they don't love me, what I feel for them turns out to be mother love. Furthermore, I know exactly when I became the parent of my stepdaughter, when I gave birth to our relationship. She was 13. We sat in the front row and listened to her pray the blessings, sing her Torah portion like an angel, and deliver the insightful talk she had prepared. Her voice clear, she shone with intelligence and strength. Suddenly, I realized I could no longer tell if her beauty and grace were objectively true. Suddenly, I only viewed her through the fierce, shaded lens of a parent. From then on, I knew I belonged to her even if she didn't belong to me. 
With my stepson, the labor was longer and harder. When his blame blazed unbearingly and my, spain, my pain spasmed into misery, I'd wanted only to push him out. I'd hide in the big flower chair next to the attic, hurt by his displaced unkindness more than I could take. At those moments, I admitted defeat. I thought, his going to college cannot come soon enough. <laughs> then one winter, when a blizzard buffeted our house and the fireplace became our only source of heat, we pulled the couch close to it. He sat next to me. On that day of loud wind and warm fire, we reached the end of a conversation with more mutual understanding than we had started it with. His flushed fury settled, and I knew I would always try again with him. I am not his mother, but I am his parent. Now they both have stretches of trust and connection with me, although those times can still feel fragile, like a young child on unsteady legs. Learning our way with each other takes so much time. I hope they will continue the path we've started. I hope they will let others love them long and well. I hope they will have the chance to embrace children, regardless of how the children are. Then there's this hole, and no one seems to know where it came from. Light at the bottom, but we are afraid to look in. And everything seems change, though not in any way that you could describe. We notice that all of the birds have disappeared, like Antietam afterward. Eventually, we will have to find a way to explain this, if only to ourselves. For now, we divert the road, build a wall, erect warning signs. Thank you.
sneering I'm a tumbleweed rolling lonely to you I'm a tumbleweed We all belong to the Boston Marathon. On Patriot's Day, we awake at dawn to hear Paul Revere shout across suburban lawn. Then at Charles River's start, runners dart all the way to the finish line. The 2013 race included random acts of violence, the air, the race ended with bombs bursting through air and a cloak of guardedness descended upon the good city of Boston. No cell phone service, planes could not land, and a 15 block area was cordoned off as a crime scene. Pressure cooker bombs going off at the end of the race, letting Boston know its place as a city of fear, a city of guards left in charge. At week's end, we awoke to media blare of night shootout scare, and now a total lockdown is taking place in neighborhood space. A day spent in fear listening to media updates. At day's end, the suspect is found hiding, bleeding in a backyard boat, and the town of Boston just has to gloat because that suspect we sought and fought is now finally caught. And that is a lot. Thank you. When I set out on a journey, though the road be twisty turny or the path be straight and narrow, there's one constant that I bring. Riding shotgun on the dashboard, facing backward, looking inward. <laughs> My companion on life's highways, Plastic Buddha on a spring. <laughs> oh, Plastic Buddha, my companion, bring me joy and understanding. Help me neutralize the tension as I navigate today. When a kid in a suburban cuts me off and takes my parking place, remind me of my inner peace as I go on my way. Bald of head and robe of yellow, he's a soulful little fellow. And he's bouncing on his spring to the rhythm of the road. His expression of serenity reminds me of what has to be. Helps me keep my sanity, makes sure I don't explode. Oh, plastic Buddha, my companion, bring me joy and understanding. Help me neutralize the tension as I navigate today. When a Texan in his Lexus flips me off, then takes the exit. Remind me of my inner peace as I go on my way. When I'm sitting in construction, and I'm sobbing in frustration, and the line stretched to eternity, at least it feels that way. Plastic Buddha helps my patience, keeps me calm, brings me acceptance. As I watch him do his spring dance, his gentle bob and sway. Oh, Plastic Buddha, my companion, bring me joy and understanding. Help me neutralize the tension as I navigate today. When I'm trapped behind a folky, driving slowly in his Prius, <laughs> remind me of my inner peace as I go on my way. Feathered dance. Lovely feathers, so lovely peeping out from behind green vines. A magnificent dance leaves sparkles in my eyes and a hint of a dream plays around the edges of my vision. But I am not a bird for whom that would suffice. This spectacle leaves me cold below my neck. I want an arrow flaming special for me and only me, 
a direct hit, a question aimed straight at my heart. Thank you. Lavender, jasmine, rosemary, 